Okay, so this one tweet from OpenAI caused Google to lose about $100 billion, which is crazy. Now, OpenAI has officially joined the browser race, and they just introduced their browser called Atlas. It's basically a browser built around ChatGPT. It's going to have memory of all the stuff that you have browsed so far. It has agent that can take actions on your behalf and can really work as a collaborator. And this might be the first real competitor to Chrome's dominance. Now, that being said, I feel like it's still a little rushed. Okay, so let me walk you through the setup process and we're going to look at this together. So I just downloaded the app and I'm going to try to install it and let's see what happens. Okay, I think installation is complete. All right, so it seems like I'll actually need to log in to my ChatGPT account. So let's log in. I forgot to record this part on my account, so I'm going to show you two different things. This is how the setup process looks like. It tells you how many days you have been using ChatGPT and then Atlas. But the most interesting part is going to be this. Here is a tweet. Now, it's according to this, you get higher rate limits on Atlas if you set it as a default browser. Here it says, unlock seven days of extended limits on messaging upload files, data analysis, and image generation. Now it's going to be pretty bad if you your browser rate limits you. So keep that in mind while you are using this. Okay, so I went through the setup process. I did not enable memories because I feel like it's a pretty bad idea if you enable memories on your browser at the moment. But let's see how it works. So this is basically the main window and it has a pretty nice, neat animations, right? So it's basically the chat GPT experience. You can actually look at everything in here. You can also select, I think, different models. Okay, so let's ask it to do something for us. Can you go to the IRS website and download the latest version of W9 form? Okay, so let's see if the agent can actually perform actions. By the way, I recently released the version of this dictation app that I was using. It's going to be available for download. Details are going to be in the video description. It's one of the fastest transcription app for Mac OS right now. Okay, it says, yes, I found the latest version of Rebly 9. You can download it directly from here. No, I want you to download it. Use the agent mode to download that form for me. Okay, it's actually not a great start, I would say because I specifically said, I can use your browser to download. Would you like me to continue? Yes, please. Agent mode may introduce risks. Okay, so this is the first thing that you see. So we're going to say, start logged in. Okay, not sure what it's doing right now. Okay, now I think the agent mode is enabled, thinking about the actions that it's going to take. And it says, I'm sorry, I don't have the ability to download files directly. However, you can, come on. Okay, I would say this is a pretty bad experience. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's ask Claude for Chrome. I'm going to use Sonnet 4.5. So we're going to send the same command. Can you go to the IRS website and download the latest W9 form for me? Okay, let's send this in. Now, the good thing about Claude for Chrome is that it can work in multiple tabs, very similar to what Atlas can do. It is running within your Chrome browser but it can take actions. So it went, opened the IRS website, and now I think it's looking for the W9 form. So let's see if Cloud for Chrome will be able to do this for us or not. Now, while that is doing, let actually go back. Let's go back. I'm going to open yet another tab. Can you go to the IRS website and download the latest W9 form for me? Use the agent mode. Okay, let's send this in and let's see what it does. Yes, please go ahead and download the file. If I have to tell it multiple times to just download the file, I think it's definitely not a really good user experience. Again, it says I can't download the file directly. However, you can access this. Okay, let's go to Claude for Chrome. I think it's still doing something. Should be able to download the form by now. Okay, and Cloud for Chrome is definitely a lot slower compared to the ChatGPT agent mode. Now it's stuck in the loop. Now it's typing W9. So it seems like it found the form. Good, let's see if it's going to actually download it for us. Actually, pretty surprising. 
Cloud for Chrome I went and opened that page. And then I think it will be able to download it. Actually, it's asking for me. I have found the W9 form. The PDF is now open in the browser. Can you confirm you want me to do download? Okay, so now we can tell it yes. And hopefully it's going to just click on this and download the form for us. And it did open the save option for us. Now you as a user have to click it because the agent cannot click outside of the browser. But at least Cloud for Chrome has no problem downloading files in the agent mode. Okay, we're gonna also try Gemini. So I think it's looking at this tab right now. Can you go to the IRS website and download the latest version of W9 form for me? All right, let's send this in. I don't know if it actually can take actions. I have seen it read web pages, but I haven't actually seen it take actions before. So let's see what it does. So it says I can't download the files for you, but I can provide you direct links. Very similar to what ChatGPT Atlas was doing. Yeah, it gave me links rather than being able to actually download the files. Okay, now the animations are really neat, which I think is pretty awesome. But in terms of functionality, I think we will yet to see how useful this is going to be. Although it did fail my initial test. Can you look for the latest price action of Google stock? after the release of chat GPT Atlas. Okay, let's send this in. And you definitely want to try my app for transcribing speech on your MacBook. As you, you're able to see, it's extremely fast. Okay, this is, I think, the normal chat GPT experience. So it opened up different links. It's searching through things right now. Very modern UI which is pretty neat, right? And you're going to have this Ask ChatGPT available on the sidebar on almost any website. You can also take control of doing things. Actually, it's trying to open multiple pages. Now, let's actually take this. I'm going to go back to Cloud for Chrome. Let's ask it to do the same thing. Cloud for Chrome also has the ability to open multiple web pages, which is pretty neat. Now, I think ChatGPT or GPT Atlas has completed the task. So it says, I found up to date news articles about OpenAI's launch for ChatGPT Atlas and its impact on Google's stock price. So there was a reduction of 2.6% in the afternoon trading. And, and that's what the trend we saw, right? So extremely useful in terms of it's able to look at multiple different websites collect data from them and then is able to give you the final response, which is pretty neat. Now, here's what the experience looks like with Cloud for Chrome. This opens one page at a time. So it's not as robust and as fast as ChatGPT Atlas. It looks through multiple pages, but one page at a time. So it's definitely a lot slower. Okay, so very similar findings again by Cloud for Chrome as well. Can you Give me a comparison between the features that are being offered by Chrome, ChatGPT, Atlas, and Comet, and the Dia browser, and tell me which one would you recommend using. Okay, so here's what ChatGPT found. So Chrome is mature, but it's not built for AI, which I totally agree, but Google is trying to add more and more AI-related features. The great thing is it's able to find the latest information about ChatGPT Atlas, which is pretty awesome, right? Because it was just released, right? So the search mode is definitely really good, right? It's being new. It's fewer years of real world usage compared to Chrome. It's just the first day, right? I think it's better for AI integrated assistant baked in, especially if you are a heavy ChatGPT user. Comet is from Perplexity AI, and I think this is probably the strongest competitor. I don't have access to Comet, so I can't really compare it directly. Then there is Dia Browser from the browser company. Also, I haven't really tried it, so I can't really say much. The main differentiating factor is going to be the agent mode in ChatGPT Atlas. Although, based on my quick test that I showed you before, I am not really impressed by it yet. But take that with a grain of salt because it was just a very simple quick test. Now, some very interesting takes from the community members. So here is 
Yu Chen Jin, and he says the AI browser wars has officially begun with opening release of Atlas. Chrome has about 4 billion active users, ChatGPT about 800 million, and OpenAI is probably the only company that can really challenge Google's browser dominance. So with the recent releases that OpenAI has had, OpenAI is really becoming a product company, not only just a research lab. And in some cases, they have to do it because they need to work towards the valuation they have and the amount of funding they are getting. So there has to be some sort of a return on the investment. And overall, I think we are at a stage where models are capable enough. Now every company is trying to build products on top of it. And we are actually seeing a convergence of same categories of products. So OpenAI today released the Atlas browser. Every company almost, except I guess like XAI and some of the Chinese companies have some sort of browser automation baked in. We have deep researchers from almost all the companies. We have coding agents from almost all the companies. And these are the different product areas that you're going to see being matured over time. So while we're talking about coding agents, the AI Studio team at Google DeepMind also released a refreshed version of the build apps within AI Studio. I think it's more of a UI refresh than the model itself because this capability was previously present, but now the UI is, I think, really well polished and you definitely want to try if you want to build some apps within AI Studio. Now, we started this video with this plot, but I also want to show you where somebody said it's pretty much noise if you look at a longer horizon on Google stock performance. Search is at the core of Google's business. Now, we don't know if it actually is because the stock has recovered a little bit, but I think OpenAI is probably the first real competitor to Chrome's dominance. So do let me know what your thoughts are on ChatGPT Atlas, what your experience is and what you think, whether it will be a real competitor to Google or not. I'm going to be testing it a lot more. I just wanted to show you some of my initial thoughts and tests in this very early video. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.